Hello everybody, and welcome to my April reading vlog. I am starting off my month by reading one book and listening to one audiobook. The first book is obviously for my 100 Epic Reads of a Lifetime poster, and I'm reading Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. I will talk in more detail in my 100 Epic Reads reading vlog about that book, but I'm halfway through it at the moment, and I am pretty surprised at how much I am enjoying the writing of it. Normally dystopian fiction from the 1940s, such as 1984, I didn't like the writing, I couldn't get into it, it was too high school essay for me, but this book is actually well written and I was enjoying the process of reading the actual prose. So I will be finishing that book soon, and the audiobook that I am listening to is w Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. Now, I am well aware of the problematic aspects of the book and the author itself. Just know that I am listening to the audiobook for free on my library account, so it is just sort of a way to not directly purchase the book, obviously, and support that. I am only about 10% of the way through it, and so far... The narrators have very heavy Russian accents, so I've had to actually, like, tone down my reading speed for this book. But so far, so good. I'm getting the gist of it. It's a pretty simple story, I think. So that's my update for now. Look forward to the rest of my reading month. Alright, you are currently sitting on an HDMI cable box, and I'm trying to film in the middle of chaos. But I went shopping today, and I wanted to show off my mini haul. So the first thing I want to do is show off the t-shirts that I got. So this is one. And this is two. And for books, I got this beautiful Simon & Schuster edition of Alice in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass. It's from the 1980s. I'm going to take this library plastic off, but it's just beautiful and has lots of very beautiful illustrations in it. They're just really, really pretty, and I'm excited to own just such a nice, beautiful edition. I wanted an edition with really beautiful cover and beautiful illustrations. I then got books 5, 6, and 7 of the Kitty Norville series. Uh, book 4 wasn't there, so I'm going to have to find that by other means, probably ebook. But yeah, I read the first three books and wasn't as interested in them, but I hear that the vampire characters are more prevalent later, so I wanted to try out the series again, and it's cool that I found all of these same editions that'll fit nicely on my shelf. And finally, I got this edition of The Tale of the Body Thief that has the insert page very VC Andrews, very 80s and 90s. I got it because I have the exact same copy that I own that has been withdrawn, broken, breaking, falling apart, ugh, taped together with love. So I got a nice fresh copy to replace it. So that's my update for now. It is literal chaos in here. All the pets are running around and barking and I have so much stuff to do. So that's it. just a mini update. I finished Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan, and I'm going to be perfectly honest, I don't really remember listening to it. I listened to it on audiobook because I thought that absorbing a new fantasy world in my ear would be a lot easier than trying to read all of the words on the page and getting confused. So I listened to the audiobook, I listened to all 10 hours of it, and I really can't tell you much besides the premise, that there are three characters. One is a girl who gets her magic from the gods. One is, like, a guy from, like, in, like, a bodyguard or assassin group that works for the king. They're called, like, the Vultures or something. And that there's the prince 
who is going to get killed by his father in order to increase his own power, so he wants to kill the king, so he can't do that. I know it is just the first book to set up a, I believe, trilogy, but I don't remember anything that happened other than, like, them journeying to that kingdom. People use their blood for magic. That's about it. So I'm going to give the book two stars because I didn't hate it. I know that much. I wasn't listening to it, dreading having to open it up again. I was just listening to it, and I was sure listening to words, but it didn't really come together in my head, you know? I can't really think about it after. This has never happened to me before. I've never read a book and forgotten it, like, right away. So that's something. And that shows me that I'm not going to continue the series, obviously. I'm not going to try that again. <laughs> And just this morning, I finished They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. Now, this is a story about, um, it's a dual perspective between a student and a professor, and, um, men that the professor kills. Very good. I liked it. I did not expect that reveal at all, even though it was hinted at. I was like, whoa, very well written. I did like it very, very much. I kind of predicted what was going to happen sort of towards the end of the book for both perspectives, but that does not hinder it at all. I'm giving it four stars because I liked it. I liked the way that the story went. I liked all the things that happened. I was a bit frustrated with some of the characters, but those guys were meant to be frustrating on purpose. And I found the student perspective to get a little bit samey and dry after a while, but you know, they're like teenagers, so it makes sense that they're kind of going through the same thing over and over again. So yeah, I preferred that one to the maidens. I couldn't help comparing them because I acquired them at the same time. So join me as I figure out what the hell I'm going to read next. I think I'm going to read things that are vastly different from those two genres that I just tried out. Here's my update about what I'm reading right now. I decided to read something that was completely different to what I started off my month with. So I'm reading a Greek myth retelling. It's called Penelope's Web by Christopher Rush. I am two thirds of the way through it. And wow! It is one of those Trojan War retellings that's trying to say war is not as glamorous as myth makes it out to be, which Duh, of course not. You don't need many, many books to relay that sentiment. This book is just awful. For some reason, it has Odysseus, like, relaying the truth. You know, the one who lies constantly, the one who is constantly lying and is being sly. The guy who is known for being, like, wily and, like, lying and, like, being, like, deceitful. He's the one who tells the real truth. Okay. And then they have, like, all of myth, kind of like the mythical side of the story, being told through Penelope, weaving that funeral shroud for Laertes, uh, Odysseus's dad, while she's waiting for Odysseus to come home. Which, like, yeah, kind of. I can see where, like, they're coming from with doing that. But it just keeps off the idea that, like, women don't know what they're talking about. Women live in an imaginary emotional fantasy where myth is, like, this huge, like, magical thing. And only, like, men who went to war know anything about the real world. It just gives off that vibe. And the entire story is written so vulgar. It's written really gross, really violent and vulgar, which, yeah, war, war is really gross. But it is misogynistic, it is homophobic in, like, a way that is really, really off-putting and disgusting. It's not so much realistic as it is, like, this isn't your grandfather's Trojan War. I'm an edgy 12-year-old. I can say the fuck word, and I can talk about women's body parts in a really nasty way, and I have really mean insults, and I'm gonna stick my balls in your mouth. It's, like, so immature. It's very immature and vulgar, and it's just... Not a fun way to absorb anything about Greek myth or the Trojan War. And it's like 700 pages. I'm like 500 pages into it now. So I will finish it just because, you know, I need to get that out of the way. I don't like DNFing. 
sometimes. I'm trying to see it out, but I know I won't see much. So that was a horrible decision. I need to read a really good book next. I think I deserve that. So that's my update for now. Someone loves their dashes. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. So I chose my next book, and it is called Renfield, Slave of Dracula by Barbara Hambly. And I don't think it's very good. I am trying to find a retelling of Dracula that sort of expands upon Renfield and Dracula a little bit because that was sort of an underutilized plot point in the original novel. The book is trying to do it, but it's doing it in a little bit of a weak way. They have Renfield experiencing dreams that are actually events happening in real time, which could be interesting, but then the book is still boggled down by the epistolary different point of view shifts of other characters, and I think it would have been better if they had just stuck to, I'd say, just Renfield's point of view and Dr. Seward's point of view, because they're both in the asylum uh, dealing with each other. That would be more interesting, and I don't like the fact that Renfield sort of knows everything that's going on. I like the idea that he just knew that Dracula was dastardly and he would be attacking me. There are some other interesting ideas in the book as well that um, Renfield was trying to communicate uh, via letter with his wife and daughter. Um, his in-laws are bothering him and um, accusing him of inheritance issues and, you know, marrying her for money, all that stuff. So there is an attempt to write a compelling story, but then a lot of it is just boggled down by a lot of things that I don't particularly like and I feel should not have been in this version of the story. So I am a bit disappointed in that, but I am not saying that this is the worst book that I've read this month. It's just sort of another blah book. So I really, really, really need this next book that I read to be good, and I think I've picked it out. My best friend has recommended that I read Fangs by Billy Belly Belly? Belly Bolly? Yep, this is totally a real name. It is a vampire manga about these two guys as one of them starts to become a vampire and they have to deal with it. That's all I know about it, but she highly recommended it and the art seems really, really gorgeous, so I am very excited to get into yet another vampire comic. That seems to be my year so far, is reading any vampire comic I haven't already gotten to. So that's my update for now. Okay, so today I finished Fangs, Volume 1, and it was really, really good. I'm giving it five stars. Oh my god. This was adorably sweet and compelling, and the art was fantastic, and the relationship between the two of them was just... I don't usually say the word stunning, but it was stunning. This is a BL manga, by the way. I never mentioned that. Like, I actually annotated which I never do, but this is my friend's copy and I wanted to return it to her with a lot of my comments inside of it. I didn't actually write inside the novel, but oh my god, I love this and I want volume two right now. Volume two isn't going to be out in English until September. I want it now. So this is safe to say this is probably going to be my favorite book of the month. I am in love. Hello. 
just a super very mini update because I haven't done much since finishing Fangs. So I'm going to show you my latest read and probably my last one for the month. I'm currently reading Dangerous Liaisons by Pierre French de French. For those who don't know, Dangerous Liaisons was a French text written in the 18th century by this guy. And it's about two characters, the Marquis and Valmont, who are just the worst kind of people. They are trying to ruin the lives of everyone around them in the aristocracy. And it's just a lot of intrigue. It's an epistolary novel. And so far, it's not my favorite thing I've ever read, but I do really like the letters exchanged between Valmont and the Marquis. They're very bitchy towards each other, and I can appreciate that. It's a bit repetitive because Valmont is trying to court a married woman, and they're sending letters to each other, and it's just very, very repetitive. And then the Marquis, she's trying to, like, ruin this younger couple's life. It's not that fun to read. I found it personally easier to watch. There is a film adaptation that was made in like the very early 90s and it stars John Malkovich and Glenn Close. That one's really good. There's apparently a miniseries called Valmont, which has Colin Firth play Valmont. I've never seen that, but there's another option. And in the 90s, there was a little film called Cruel Intentions that's based on Dangerous Liaisons. So if you don't feel like reading a lot of 18th century letter writing, there are a few adaptations that are easier to watch. So that's my update for now. I will see you in the wrap-up, I guess. Hey, welcome to my wrap up. So I ended up reading seven books this month. The first book, of course, I read for my 100 Epic Reads of a Lifetime poster. I read Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, and I ended up giving that one three stars. It was really well written, it was nice and short, and it was a good enough of a dystopian fiction that I could, you know, relate to it instead of just seeing how things are now and going, well, I'm living in that. <laughs> 1984 specifically was hard for me to connect with because I'm just already living in that sort of society. But this book, Fahrenheit 451, was a very interesting look at how they censor art and censor literature and how they placate society. And it was very interesting given the recent news about banning books especially. So I feel that this book resonated way more than other dystopian sci-fi fiction that I've read for the poster so far. The second book that I read, well, I listened to it, was Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan, and I'm only giving that book two stars. Why? I can't remember the book. So I'm sure to find enough book, I just can't give it a higher or lower rating than that because I don't remember reading it. I listened to it and I don't remember a thing. <laughs> Next, I read They Never Learn by Lane Fargo, and I ended up giving that one four stars. I really enjoyed the dual perspective. I really enjoyed what both characters were going through. The student, less so towards the ending. I did not expect the twist, so it was very exciting. And it's very, I'd say, good for her fiction. Like, it's very Gone Girl. It's very that vibe. It's very, you want to see this killer succeed. And it's the sort of academic thriller that I really enjoy. So I really liked that book. I then read Penelope's Web by Christopher Rush. I ended up giving that one one star. Horrible Trojan War retelling through the eyes of a gross man who thinks that only the war itself was important and that everything was a lie because war is so traumatizing, completely removing all of the general themes of myth, all of the relatable themes of myth that anybody can understand. And yes, you're not supposed to romanticize war, but it's Greek mythology. Like, you need to understand that that's what the whole point of it is. So I just hated the way the book treated everything. It was grossly misogynistic, grossly, grossly homophobic, violent to the point of just disgust. 
and very immature, and I hated it. I then read Renfield Slave of Dracula by Barbara Hambly, and I gave that one, I believe, two and a half to three stars. I can't really remember at the moment. It was a solid enough Dracula retelling from the point of view of Renfield and also the point of view of Dr. Seward, but it tended to branch out to too many characters trying to tie into the original novel again, and I could just read the original novel if I wanted to see these same things reiterated. I also didn't like that Renfield could just see everything going on in his dreams. I would have preferred if he had little to no knowledge of certain subjects and then we found that out along with him. I enjoy the dramatic irony aspect better than just him knowing everything from dreams. And I wish that they had developed the relationship between Dracula and Renfield a little bit better. I do appreciate that they tried to give him a family and his in-laws trying to um, interrupt things. That was an interesting aspect, but hopefully I find a better Dracula retelling soon. And then my favorite book of the month was Fangs, Volume 1. I loved it so much. Stunning. I want Volume 2 right now. I'm gonna chew my arms off because I'm so excited. I love it so, so much. I love it. And then I ended my month with Dangerous Liaisons. I ended up giving this one two stars because I only really liked the letters exchanged between the two main characters, Valmont and the Marquis. I didn't really care about anybody else's letters, and I found the letters between Valmont and his love interest to be way too repetitive, and I was very bored by it. But the language was really cool and sassy and funny and just very detailed, so if you're into that sort of epistolary novel that's just sort of character drama, I recommend it. If not, just watch one of the adaptations of this story. All right, that's another month down. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.